name is Noel. Um, I see Stefan actually has a talk on Clang plugins just now, so he'll he'll take you through all the details. I'm just going to run you through some of the stuff that uh, I've done. Um, first, getting started with Clang plugins is relatively straightforward. There's an excellent tutorial on the LibreOffice wiki that you can run through. The only roadblock that I've run into is that uh, an Ubuntu, on an Ubuntu install, the Clang plugins are in a slightly different place to uh, Fedora and SUSE, which means uh, I, I added a symlink, but I've added a note to myself to update the autogen so that it finds it on Ubuntu next time. Um, the other nice thing that you need to know is that if you're doing Clang plugin development, um, when you want to run it across the whole build and you need to do a clean, uh, don't do a make clean. Uh, somebody nicely added me a make internal dot clean, which just flushes all of the internal LibreOffice code, so it doesn't doesn't need to rebuild all the libraries the next time it it does its its clean pass pass. Now, uh, doing clean. Why do we why do we do clean? Uh, of course, specifically clean plugins. We do clean plugins because we want to enforce rules that we can't enforce in the type system. Um, there's a whole bunch of uh, informal rules about using APIs and using classes and structures that uh, we we know but uh, we don't enforce. And so uh, the Clang plugin allows us to to enforce those rules. Um, it also allows us to find common coding issues. Um, uh, things like Coverity really does an excellent job here. There's a whole bunch of coding stuff that is quite specific to LibreOffice that, uh, that we can make improvements by looking for for common uh, faults, and there's a whole bunch of stuff that uh, Coverity just doesn't doesn't know about yet, or they haven't decided is important enough to look for. But uh, LibreOffice is big enough that pretty much any mistake that you can think of is somewhere in the code. It doesn't really matter what crazy idea you come up with. Uh, if you create a plain plugin for it, you will find at least one instance of it in the code. Now I wrote. Uh, some of the bigger things I wrote were the SV Stream Output Operators plugin that converted, that was a rewriter, that converted the SV Stream Output Operators to use explicitly named methods for writing binary fields out. And the reason there was that previously SV Stream was using kind of C++ streams left-left uh, uh, or right-right type operators, um, which while very convenient meant that if you changed the data type of a field in one of your classes, you would end up accidentally modifying the binary format that you were writing out, which is not exactly ideal. So we switched all of those operators to have explicit names so that no more accidental binary changes occur. Um, I wrote a Clang Rewriter to modify the way we cast uh, when we do, um, when, we, when we move between different types in an UNO hierarchy. Uh, Stefan wrote the actual casting logic in the in the Uno reference class, and I wrote a rewriter that went around looking for places to, to fix that and modify it. Uh, then I wrote some other smaller things which were purely claim warnings that uh, looked for external and not defined, uh, where you've got an external prototype but you're not actually declaring that method. Um, I looked for places, the pass by ref plugin, where we're passing OU strings and we were copying them previously, which is completely unnecessary because no use string is by definition immutable. Now, this is actually fairly straightforward. These kind of, the, the, the claim warning plugins are, are relatively straightforward to write. Mostly I start by looking for a plugin that already does something similar, cut and pasting it, and then uh, modifying it. The hardest part is tracking up and down the C++ AST hierarchy. Now, luckily, most of the names in the uh, claim AST are quite unique, so if you Google for it, it pretty much just pops up as the top head. And then you track up and down their Doxygen documentation, looking for places, uh, looking for what exactly, what exactly you need to modify. Now, when it comes to rewriters, I would suggest you stay away from rewriters, especially initially. I found them very painful to write, um, because LibreOffice is just so big that there's just a huge variation in the syntax we use. So any change you need to make, you need to be aware of all the... Your, your writer's basically getting it a bunch of stuff wrong. And you're going to have to go in and hand tweak it. Uh, it's very hard to make the rewriter robust. There are a couple of re robust rewriters, but it's just, it's just difficult. So I, I would suggest starting out by just writing plain plugins that generate warnings. 
that's it from me. Any questions?